What you do, Ian, you create uh, three these folders, uh, uh, images. Uh, don't need to create the images folder. We we don't need the images folder. We need we need coding folder, notes folder. Uh, you need another folder called videos. Videos folder. If you want, uh, you can download the videos. I'll give it to you. I will give you the link of the videos because I will upload this video on the YouTube. Okay. So from there you can download it if you want, and if you want to keep it there, you can keep it there. So videos are there, and uh, and there is there will be another folder for. You are in class 11, so I am creating another folder called class 11 and I will put all these folder inside class 11. So, ENV class 11 and inside the class 11, we have all these folders, okay. So, now let me go to one note file, class 11 notes, we will start here, ISC. 2025. So, one notes folder and one? Uh, this is the structure of the folder coding, notes, PDF, and videos. Uh, notes, notes folder is uh, required by you. PDF folder is not required by you because uh, whatever PDF I will give it to you, you will store, you will download those PDFs, right? And store those PDFs in your notes, right? Because these PDFs were required by you. Ha, notes coding and video. And video, if you want to uh, download the YouTube video, the video which I will give it to you for the class, that you will keep it in the video. If you want, you can keep it. And if you don't want, then leave it on the YouTube. Um, because otherwise, what will happen? Uh, every time you have to go to YouTube and then see the video. So it's better option if you download the videos from the YouTube also. That is also possible. Okay, download the YouTube videos and or you have the link, you can use that link also to go to the YouTube video online and then see the, just open the BlueJ the way I'm doing it and uh, then you go to, uh, after opening the BlueJ, go to project, create a new project, right? And then click on the location partner, you have the option called choose, okay? So go to choose, right? And uh, then uh, I'll go to your folder called Ian, Ian uh, Lee, right, class 11 coding, right, and uh, I will create a, a project over here, okay. So, I'm writing here, the name of the project is class 11, okay. I will click OK and it will open up a new project uh, window for me. Evenly, it will open a new project window for you. Right? So, let me explain you the environment of uh, BlueJay first. Okay? And after that, uh, I will uh, be starting with the Java. Okay? First, you try to understand the environment. So, this is a uh, BlueJay. Let me uh, copy another uh, BlueJ window. So, this is your uh, BlueJ environment. This is your BlueJ environment. And here, no, here in this area, the area now which I am marking it out in blue, it is already marked it out. You can see the big uh, rectangular area. Fine. In this area, fine. Uh, in this area, your class, your classes and your packages are here. Okay, this is called class and your classes will be residing here, your class, your class will be here, class and your package is also here, package. You know what is called package? Package is basically a folder, right, a folder or a directory kind of a thing in Java. Okay. In Java world, package is called a folder or a directory where all the classes are stored. Fine. So, package, your package will be stored, stored inside the package. Now, you have classes. You have multiple classes. Say, this is class 1. There will be uh, class 2, 
something like this will be there okay so this is called this this area is called class and package bench class and so here you have three buttons new class and there is one uh, inheritance marking and there is one button called compile right this is there okay then then there are these two boxes are here you can see uh, there are two boxes here one box is here this is one box this box is called object bench right whenever you create any object by using the class your object will sit here right in blue j this is called object bench okay Achha. then there is another box here right there is another box here this box there is another box over here this box the green one this box is called code pad this box is called code pad right so in code pad na you can write down your code here right single single code single single command line command or or a single java statement you can write single java statement now you can see here there is a very uh, small there is a very small rectangular box here right this this box i am talking about this box here this box over here okay this box right this is this is called jvm indicator jvm in this box you have something uh, in blue color some something going on when your program is executing now this is moving here and there this is moving that indicator is indicating that your program is executing fine and if you want to stop the execution of the program then there is a button here right this button is actually used to this button is used to reset used to reset the jvm reset the jvm okay this button is used to reset the jvm right so this is the blue j ide this is blue j this is blue j ide okay i hope uh, you have understood whatever i have said so. right what is ide ide is integrated integrated development Okay, it is called an ID. So here you will get some messages also. Here you will get messages initializing virtual machine done. Right? Sometimes you compile the program, you will get compilation uh, completed. Right? If you have any error, that will that will also be uh, written over here. Uh, you have some error or right? So this is a this is a notification area. This is called. notification area right so you should watch the notification area okay so i hope uh, this is a basic idea about jvm right so now the question is what is an ide what is an ide so full form to i have said to you what is the full form of ide so ide stands for ide ide stands for ide stands for integrated development development environment veron so it means it means means it has everything every thing to write to write a program compile the program and execute the program and executes the program to write 
a program right to write a program fine to write a program you need something called editor editor is required to write down the program right you need editor now editor to write down the program editor okay editor to write program the syntax errors right whether you have written the instructions properly or not you need something called compiler okay you need something called compiler syntax basically uh, syntax means a uh, rules to write down a code okay okay so that is that should be checked whether you have written it correctly or not so that to check the syntax na, we need something called compiler compiler actually checks the code compiler compiler checks the code right compiler if there is any error if there is any error it redirects it to the editor if any error if any error redirects to redirects to the editor to the editor okay fine and if there is no error if no error if no error is no errors okay if no error it will generate it will generate it will generate something called byte code okay it will it will generate a byte code say this program is called a b c dot java okay abc dot java so if it it has no error na, it will generate a file called abc dot class file okay this file contains byte code right no error generates fine i hope you have understood this your compilation is okay and you have the byte code with you right so what you will do you will execute the program right so byte code is here this is the byte code this is the next step this is the byte code now what we do we byte code means abc dot class file abc dot class file now this byte code will go to now this byte code will go to to jvm this byte code will go to there is something called jvm so jvm so what is jvm jvm is java virtual machine jvm is j stands for java v stands for virtual virtual and m stands for machine java virtual machine is your runtime environment this is runtime runtime this executes byte code actually right it converts byte code into binary and then those binaries will be executed fine so so this is basically an interpreter this is an interpreter fine jvm is an interpreter okay so it executes the code jvm executes the code jvm executes the code jvm executes the code and you see the output and you see the output see the output on the terminal you see the output on the ter on the terminal on the terminal so let me show you one uh, program how to uh, write programs on the blue jay i hope you know all this but still let me explain you the process so you have written a class right so in class we write down a program so this is our first program so let me write down here first uh, as the class name right 
so the class name and this file name should match so what we do from the instance variable just check check this out where from where i am removing the information right in school generally they remove all the information but i will recommend you you will not remove all the information you remove the information from the instance variable okay so after that you write down this close this and then you write down public static void main string args string args okay and uh, you can write down uh, something called system dot out dot print okay and uh, slash f right welcome welcome to java programming so what is public static void main what's the difference between that and normal only void main uh, there there is a difference in java na public static void main string args right this jvm na searches for this in your class okay and uh, execution starts from here okay but in blue j if you don't provide the proper public static void main string args then blue j environment creates for you okay and then you can execute the program okay acha there is another reason why i am always uh, suggest student to write it down public static void main string args okay in your isc question paper right if say that if they say that write down the main function okay you have to use they want this syntax they want this syntax otherwise your three mark will be deducted how many mark three three marks will be deducted because they will say that ki you have not written the main function okay out of 10 three will be deducted okay if if they in the question na they will say that ki write down the main function in few questions they will say that write down the main function if they won't say write down the main function then you don't have to write it okay but if they say write the write down the main function then you have to write it otherwise your marks will be deducted fine so that is the main reason you should follow this syntax and slowly slowly i will explain you ki why this syntax is important also okay so let me compile this code so i compiled it to compile the code i have to press control k in your if you are using mac then it will be command k okay or uh, you are using mac or windows mac sir mac so command k okay so uh, in mac it is command k and if you press command k it will get compiled or you can use this button called compile also it, it will give you the same effect but uh, programmers actually hate using uh, trackpad or mouse okay so generally i also hate using trackpad or mouse i use is very limited amount of uh, trackpad or mouse right so let me execute this code okay so so let me execute this code now this code has given me the output welcome to java programming okay so what i will do here i will resize this window also a little bit i will resize the window also because i need the picture of this window so in school usually the program starts at import the java dot util dot star that thing yeah yeah I, i will be coming to that point first let me explain you the, uh, what are the content of these windows what is the terminal window and all i'm just introducing you school is way ahead and <laughs> and you we need to catch them slowly slowly yes. as you said that ki you don't know uh, java programming and your mother has also given me the instructions that ki uh, you also don't know uh, you you didn't studied java in 9 and 10 okay no. okay so let me uh, let me make you comfortable with the environment otherwise you will start hating this environment 
uh, what is happening, what is not happening, right? Yes. So first, you need to be acquainted with the environment. So this is your terminal window. Okay. So terminal window has three parts actually, right? This terminal window is having three parts. So only two parts is visible now. Three part parts is not visible. Uh, I will show you the third part also, right? So this is the this is the first part. This is the first part. The part which uh, I have drawn it in the form of orange color is the first part. Okay, so this part is called system dot out. What it is called? System dot out. Okay, fine. This is this is associated with system dot out. Okay, and uh, we have given the command called print. Now, I have given a command called print. Right, the print function whatever I have written in the print. That is printed over here. That is printed over here. And uh, you didn't ask me one question, sir. What is this slash f? I have used this slash f. Then after that, I have written welcome to programming. And this is not printed. After that, I have written welcome to programming. Now, welcome to programming. So, uh, what's the difference between system dot out dot print and system dot out dot print ln? Uh, right. Uh, so, uh, I have not used print ln. I have used print. Okay. Yes. So, I'm asking you, what is this slash f? You didn't ask me, sir. What is this? Why you have used this? So, slash f is actually form feed. Form feed or or clear the terminal window clear the terminal window clear the terminal window okay this is what slash f means fine so that is why we have got the cleared terminal window and our and our data is printed so this is a data right welcome to program this is the data or the content this is a data or content data or content so this data or content is printed fine welcome to programming so now coming to your answer so there 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 is a two there are two methods one is called print right and one is called print ln print and print ln okay so difference between these two is so print print has no hidden commands has no hidden has no hidden commands okay print has one hidden command right has one hidden command has one hidden command okay has one hidden command so what is that command right the hidden command is print the content print the content and shift the cursor to next line shift the cursor cursor to new line or next line new line or next line line okay i hope you have understood yes sir so it has one hidden command this is the hidden command so that is the difference between print and print print has no hidden command so it will not shift to the next line 
the cursor will not be shifted to the next line in the print but in print ln the cursor is shifted to the next line okay uh, i hope uh, this much is clear yes sir okay And there is another part in the terminal window. I need to change the color. I need this color. This is another part. This is another part. Right, this part, this part is called system dot in. System dot in. System dot in means it is associated with keyboard. Right, system dot in means it is associated with the keyboard. It is. It is associated with keyboard with keyboard okay i hope you have understood this fine so let me show you uh, one program one co one instruction right say welcome to java programming and here i have written string name and I am creating one scanner object, new scanner system dot in system dot in ok and uh, what I will do I will write see scanner is coming it is underlining it right. So, what do you do you take your you take your cursor. Ha, uh, you take your cursor here under the error, right? And select the second option. Select the second option. Okay. When you select the second option, it will be automatically typed import Java dot util dot star. You don't have to type it. Okay. Okay. Fine. So don't get afraid with the errors, right? If you if you are not understanding the error, na, just give me the screenshot. I will explain you the thing. Right? Okay. Okay. Achha. So scanner. So I want to take input here. So I have written a statement here. System dot out dot print. Right? And I am using the print. So what I have to do? I have to change the line. So change line. And here I am writing. Enter your enter your name ok. So, here I will write name is equal to sc dot right you write your next line next line uh, next line is for string ok. So, you input the uh, name right and now basically I want I want to print this. I want to print this ok. So, so first uh, enter your name right and uh, then so instead of slash n now let me use slash f. If I if I use slash f it will remove the previous output it will give me a clear window ok and then I will write this statement and here here I will write down slash n and here I will write down welcome to Java programming. Uh, first I will print your name and then I will print your uh, then I will print this message right. Say I will write down here system dot out dot print right. I will write down here slash n plus name ok name plus slash n ok. Because I am not using println, so that is why I have to give slash n at the end, or I do not have to give because in the next line I am giving it uh, slash n. So it will print your name and then it will print welcome to Java programming. Okay, so I will compile this 
and uh, then I will execute this code. Okay, so I have executed this code. Okay, so enter your name. Now you can see it is taking input, right? So I have entered your en, i a n, right? L double e. So now you can see en v. Welcome to Java programming. So this is the output, right? So I hope uh, you have understood key when you are taking keyboard input. So it's here only, right? So that is why I have written down there system dot in. Okay. Now let me show you some uh, the third part of uh, terminal window. Okay. So I said, okay. I said a question here. Just wait. Let me uh, reset the virtual machine. Okay, so I resetted the virtual machine and I went down to the coding part. Right here, I ask system dot here name. I entered here, so here I will ask system dot out dot print. Enter your age. Enter your age. Okay. So I have written, I have created a variable here, integer age equal to sc dot next int. Okay, I'm just taking integer input. Fine, and uh, welcome to Java programming. System dot out dot print slash n age is plus each okay so this is the instruction which you have written and you compiled the code it has compiled fine and now i am executing it okay so here i am writing down your name en lee and it's asking for age also right so in age now i have written here 16 you are 16 years old right yes 16 Right. Instead of one six, I have written sixteen. This is also correct, but but it is not correct for it is not correct for the Java, right? Because I have written here int. Okay. So now you can see the third front of third front of terminal window is open now. Third front of terminal window is open now, and it is generating error. And I want this to make you understand. Okay. So this is the third part of terminal window. There were three parts in terminal window. Now I, I was saying that, right? This is the third part. So let me go to my notes and then write it down. So this is the first part. This is the system dot out part. This is this area is system dot out. This area is System dot in and this area is this area is system dot err system dot err okay so whatever uh, whatever you write using system dot err that will be displayed over here right so if you write say say I'm I'm saying that here say everything is correct. Everything is correct, and here you have written the command system dot err dot print. And here you have written a message slash uh, n, right? Um, everything is fine. Thing is fine. Instead, for the system dot auto print age, hmm. write uh, slash n age, and then again, again you write you wrote plus age. Yeah, uh, age. I have written inside a double quotes, na. So that is a content, and age is a variable. Small age is the variable, and I want to print the content of the variable along with that. Okay. 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 So yes. I I hope you understand variables. Yes, sir. Okay. So that much of idea is generated. Fine. Right? 
So let's execute this code and see how it is working. So now this time what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm going to uh, do everything properly. So name is uh, ENB. Okay, age is 16. And now you can see Ian Lee, welcome to Java programming, A16 and everything is fine is also printed. Okay. So in in system dot if you if you are using system dot err dot print na, your print will be here. You are printing down over here, right? So it is basically used for error, but I am writing down here, everything is fine. You see, there is no error. <laughs> this is also indicating you have not done any mistake. Okay. So, this is the output of the program which we have uh, written just now. We'll put this over here. So, this is the output of the code, right? This is the this is the output of the code, and here you can see all three parts of the terminal window. So, three parts of the ter terminal windows are this is system dot, this is system dot out, system dot out, this is system dot in, system dot in. And this is system dot err. Okay, so I hope you have understood all three. Okay. Now let's talk about very fast fast a little bit. So what do you mean by variables? The answer will be variables. Variables. Uh, variables are the named memory location named memory location location right variables are named memory location where where values are values are stored stored okay Achha, in java we have uh, different types of variables in java in java we have uh, different types of variables and uh, types of variables or uh, different types of values right. values different types of values Ian, one minute i just uh, drink some water one minute uh, in java we have different types of uh, values right so the values are of different types say for example we have integer values okay integer values uh, we have floating values floating uh, values we have uh, character values character values we have uh, boolean values boolean values we have integer float character we have string values right so byte also value byte and then double uh, uh, right right byte and double all those are also values okay so these values are called literals these values are called literals 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 okay so these values are called literals so integer literal is this integer literal is what integer literal will be like uh, this uh, this uh, 23 45 minus 90. So these are integer literals. Okay. Extra floating literals are like this. Floating uh, literals are floating literals are like these. Uh, floating literals are uh, 3.14, 1.414, 1.414, 1.414. 1. 4. 4. Right. So these are uh, basically floating point uh, literals. Okay, character literals. Character literals are like these. In a single quote, na you have stored at the rate. This is a character literal. Okay, character literals are stored in single quotes. In single quotes, you have stored. Uh, in single quotes, you have stored one. Right. This is a character literal. In single quotes, uh, you have stored a. This is a character literal. In single quotes, you have stored small z. This is a character literal, right? Character literals are stored in single quotes. Okay. So these are character literals, etc. Okay. So let me write it down also here. The character literals. 
character literals are 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 always in are always in single quotes are always in single quotes yes single quotes are always in single quotes right so this is character uh, literal then you have boolean literal there were only two boolean literals are there uh, one is true and another one is false okay so true and false so these two are boolean literal okay string string will be anything like uh, sentences right string is always in double quotes okay this is a program this is a string literal any any name like uh, en en lee okay fine then uh, there is a uh, your institution the coaching center name sigma pi academy dot com sigma pi academy academy uh, dot com so this is the institute this is the coaching center name so you can have uh, everything is in the form of string and string uh, literals are so you can write down here comma dot 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 extra and the string literals the string literals literals are stored in double quotes are st stored in double quotes double quotes double quotes double quotes okay so here i am talking about uh, literals okay so these values are called literals okay so i am talking about values so now let's talk about data types in java data types in java in java so what are the different data types in java okay data types in java so there are two types there are two types of data type in java what are they in java in java right what are they yaar any idea no sir not sure not sure okay so one is the primitive type primitive type and uh, another one is uh, object type or user defined type object type uh you can say that object type or reference type reference type okay object type or reference type or user defined type a uh, three types not two types object type or reference type or you can say user defined types or user defined types user defined types okay fine so number 1 number 1 is primitive types primitive types primitive types these data types these uh, data types these 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 data types types are the most fundamental types in java most fundamental types in java programming language programming language java programming language right these data types are the most fundamental types in java programming language uh programming language and they are already defined they are already already defined in the programming language defined in the programming 
programming languages languages okay uh, programming uh, it may be other languages also they have a uh, some fundamental data type every programming language like c++ is having uh, primitive data types every programming language like uh, javascript is also having data type primitive uh, this primitive types are there and object and reference types are there c programming language has the same kind of a construct you can have a python programming language that also having similar kind of a constructs are there okay but they are represented uh, differently in python right uh, so so there are uh, there are eight different primitive types present in java so there are eight eight primitive types primitive types types present in java present in java right so uh, number 1 is number 1 is number 1 is uh, number 1 is boolean 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 number 1 is boolean right so here what we can do here we can write down the data type the data type and here data type and here we can write down the size of the data type size size in uh, bits size and bits okay size and bits so java oh wait Let me create the table here. Uh, we'll write here data types, data types, and here we'll write down size in bits, size in bits. Okay. So here we first write down boolean. Boolean. Uh, we will we'll create another thing here. Here we will create another thing. Here we create a default value. Default value also. Okay. So data type is a uh, default value and range of values also default value and range of values also range range also okay so let me start with uh, the first is boolean uh, boolean b double o l e a n boolean the size is only one bit size is one bit one bit means you know bits and bytes yeah. Yeah, you know. Bit and byte the same thing. Uh, no, they are not same thing. You have you have done the binary conversion and all. Binary to yeah. binary to decimal, decimal to binary. It is there in class eleven. No, sir, we not done. It was there in class eleven. In school, it is not done. Uh, not yet. Uh, not yet. No, because that is the first chapter. In your syllabus, okay. You have you have changed from commerce to computer science. To humanities. Humanities, okay. That's cool. Okay, so I think uh, you might have missed out the class. So that is the uh, reason. Okay. Default uh, default value. So default value is false. Default value is false. And uh, range is zero to one, zero zero or one, zero or one. Either it can store zero or one. 
बुलियन वैल्यूज आर ट्रू और फॉल्स राइट बुलियन वैल्यूज आर ट्रू एंड ट्रू एंड फॉल्स सो बुलियन वैल्यूज आर ट्रू एंड फॉल्स ओके and uh, here it is uh, it may store zero or one okay none other values it may store zero and one so next value is byte oh, sorry next is data type is byte next data type is byte okay so byte is 8 byte 8 not 8 byte 8 bit 8 bit you know bit bit is a kind of a switch uh, i was explaining you bit bit is a kind of a switch na this is a switch right it can either have a value 1 or it can have a value 0 it can have a value 1 or it can have a value 0 okay so have you seen this kind of a switch is there in your laptop also this this switch this diagram have you seen yes sir uh, it is there on the laptop one one press is on another press is off same same button now all the digital devices have this this uh, switch all the the monitor the tv screen which you see na right uh, nowadays they have only one switch on and off okay evenly in the car also you can see this switch it's there in the car also right nowadays now the on and off button is there you just press one button your car is on right and now now you have a keyless uh, entry also in the car is present okay so so that is actually a bit that is that is what that is a bit okay if you have eight bits na if you have eight bits like this if you have how many bits eight bits like this it is a byte okay eight eight bits eight bits is equal to 1 byte fine 1024 byte okay is equal to 1 kilobyte 1024 kilobyte kilobyte is kb 1 megabyte 1024 megabyte is equal to 1 gigabyte 1024 gigabyte 1024 gigabyte is equal to 1 terabyte this you know na 1 tb of hard drive very much famous so this calculations comes comes like this and 1024 terabyte 1024 terabyte is equal to 1 picobyte so this much of information is fine there were more information are also present okay so this much information is fine so byte the default value is 0 okay the default value is 0 the range is minus 128 to 127 positive 127 this is the range for byte okay then for after byte we have one data type called short okay the range range means in byte variable na you can store number from minus 128 to 127 you cannot store more than 127 you cannot store you cannot store the values uh, means ki less than 1 minus 128 you cannot store minus 129 in a byte variable you have, you can declare variables na like this byte byte x okay so in x you cannot store minus 129 it is not possible to store right okay and you cannot store in in x na you cannot store 128 also you cannot store right you cannot store you cannot store these values in byte right because it is out of uh, range is uh, going out of out of range these values are out of range okay so if you if you want to store minus 129 then you can go for another uh, data type called short right there is another data type called short short is having 16 bit of memory space okay default value is 0 and the value is a bit higher 
So, how uh, I am calculating this uh, minus 128 to 127. So, there is a formula out there for range. The formula is minus 2 to the power of, sorry, this will be 2 to the power of n minus 1 to, so this here it will be multiplied by minus 1, minus 1 multiplied by, okay. The formula is this, 2, 2 to the power of n minus 1, minus 1, okay, minus 1. So, this is the formula for range, this is the formula for, so if you apply this formula in short, so what you will get, you will get here, you will get here, minus 1 into 2 to the power of 15. 2 to the power of 15 minus 1, right. So, the range will be, so what will be the 2 to the power of 15? 2 to the power 15 is 32,768, okay. So, I have got the value, so let me put here, minus 32,768 to 32,767, okay. So, this is the short. Now, we have uh, byte short int, byte short and int, okay. So, we have the int, int is 32 bytes, 32 bits, not bytes, 32 bits. Default value is 0 and uh, range is, what will be the range? Range will be the bigger one here. Let us cancel this calculation and we will write here 2 to the power of 31, 2 to the power of 31 is this 2147, 2147 this value, we store this value over here, let us put a minus sign here, we can remove the commas, then we can copy this, we can write down here 2, 2, control V and here will make it 7 and this will make it positive. So, this is the range, right? If you want bigger, bigger values, right, then you can shift your data types, okay? Now, the next value is, the next is long, long, long is of 64 bits, bits, right? And the default value is 0. And let us calculate this also. Long. I hope it will give. Let us cancel this out. 2 to the power of 63. I hope it calculates. Yeah, it has calculated. So, it is a very big value. Let me put over here. So, before placing this value, let me write down this formula. Let me put the minus sign here and 2, control V and then this, then this, then this, this, and this, then this and, and let me put the uh, 7 here, okay. So, this is a long and if you need a bigger, bigger number then your uh, data types are there to serve you, okay. So, now you need Another type is there called float. Float is of 32 bits. 32 bits. The default value is 0, 0.0 f. So, this value I am just writing down the formula only minus 1 2 to the power 2 to the power. Uh, let me write down floating point floating point can hold, can hold more, this is also 32 bits, int is also 32 bit, can, can, can hold huge values, can hold huge values because it store data in an exponential formats, because, because it holds the data 
it holds holds the data the data in exponential format expo and til exponential format m a t it holds the data in an exponential format i want to change the size of this one holds the data in an exponential format okay holds the data in an exponential format right acha then there is another data type called double 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 is of 64 bits 64 bits okay the default value is 0.0 and uh, this is also floating data it can i'm writing down the same statement over here also there is another thing here ke here na in floating point we have we have six decimal places of rectification decimal places of places of rectification rectification i hope you understood six decimal places of rectification right after decimal points there will be six digits that's all okay and here here we have here we have 15 decimal places of rectification 15 decimal places of so double will give you more accurate uh, results right so it will give us so we can store we can store more accurate results more accurate so this is about uh, double now so double so everything is done now char c c h a r char char is 2 byte 2 byte 2 byte or we can say that 16 bits 16 bits 16 bits right default value is 0 and it it can hold unicode values unicode 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 values unicode unicode values it can hold unicode code values value from from will write here uh, 0x 0x 000 to 0x ffs 4fs okay it can hold unicode values from 000 to 0x 4f fine uh you it means now uh, when you type capital a in programming it holds a number behind it right that number is actually unicode values okay we'll discuss uh, these things uh, in detail also you, uh, when we will study character in detail right fine so for the time being just try to understand ki it is it contains a unicode values okay so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so this these are primitive types okay number 2 is number 2 is object type type object type or reference type or reference type or user defined type or user defined type okay these variables these variables these variables are defined are defined in java in java with the combination of with the combination of with the combination of primitive types primitive types types they 
एलोकेट मेमोरी दे एलोकेट मेमोरी मेमोरी ऑन द हिप ऑन द हिप विथ द हेल्प ऑफ विथ द हेल्प ऑफ न्यू विथ द हेल्प ऑफ न्यू विथ द हेल्प ऑफ न्यू ऑपरेटर विथ द हेल्प ऑफ न्यू ऑपरेटर इन जावा With the help of new operator, okay? New is a keyword in Java, right? In Java, now we have keywords, okay? And uh, in Java, we have uh, I think the sixty-seven or sixty-eight keywords are there, right? In the whole programming language, and that has a special meaning. And you cannot define a variable name with the keyword, okay? Fine. Say if is a keyword, for is a keyword, while is a keyword. Right, these are keyword. Int is a keyword. Float is a keyword. Double is a keyword. Char, char is a keyword. Right, we cannot define variable name with these keywords. Right, keyword has a special definition and meaning for the compiler. So we cannot use as a variable name. Right, we cannot define int boolean. We cannot do this. Right, so it has a different meaning uh, for the compile Java compiler. So similarly, new is basically an operator. Okay, so for example. For example, for example, array, okay, array, uh, array or objects or other objects in Java, other objects in Java, other objects in Java, okay. We'll study in detail uh, object type and reference type because this is your syllabus. Object type and reference type is your syllabus. Class eleven, twelve syllabus is this one, right? Class nine ten syllabus is this one. In class nine and ten, people have used this one for writing down the program. But in eleven and twelve, we'll study this one. We'll focus on this one, right? So this is a basic idea of uh, Java programming which I have given it to you. 